About 25 years ago, Toyota replaced the quirky rear-wheel drive Previa minivan with this Sienna. Now, of course, back then, the Sienna was designed for American markets in mind because it traded the Previa's rear drive architecture for a front-wheel drive platform that came standard with a V6 engine. Now, of course, sales took off, and the Sienna has been one of the most popular minivans in the North American market since 1999. Now, of course, last year, Toyota gave us a completely redesigned Sienna, the first ever electrified model. In fact, it was so shocking because Toyota got rid of the V6, and the Sienna now only comes as a hybrid vehicle, and it's the only only minivan on the market where you can get a hybrid with all-wheel drive as an option. So last year, I also had a chance to drive a lot of the new competitors from the new Kia Carnival, the refreshed Odyssey, the refreshed Pacifica. This week, Toyota has loaned me a 2022 Toyota Sienna XSE. The Sienna really didn't get any updates this year. However, after spending a week with all of its competitors, I'm going to retest the Sienna. We're going to find out, is this electrified minivan that gets up to 36 MPG still worth a look if you guys are shopping for an efficient family hauler? Stay tuned to find out. Now, typically when I do a minivan review, I'm not really starting with underneath the hood because buyers usually don't typically care about that. However, the Sienna is definitely a unique option in the segment because if you guys are looking for a V6, sad to say you're gonna have to look at its competitors because the Sienna, it only comes with a four cylinder hybrid, which comes with up to three electric motors. Now you can see underneath the hood, it's not really much to look at, but it pairs the company's corporate 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that runs on the Atkinson cycle. This is part of the new dynamic force engine family. It makes around 179 horsepower on its own and 174 pound feet of torque. Now the front electric motors, there's actually two of them that help to power the front axle. They deliver like another 190 horsepower on its own combined. However, because you can't just do a straight conversion, uh, there are some power losses here. You get around 245 horsepower combined. Toy it does not state a torque figure for the hybrid system. Uh, however, it is plenty torque it is very torque filled and you're going to notice that of course whenever you get on the accelerator it all goes out through a continuously variable transmission it's an ecvt and my particular tester that i'm showing you is front wheel drive but for about 900 bucks you can also add all wheel drive which will add a separate third electric motor at the rear axle the rear axle is only powered by that electric motor that adds like another 53 horsepower however you can't actually add it into the 245 combined rating now that power figure does make the new sienna about 50 horsepower less powerful versus the previous generation with the V6 and most of its competition. However, fuel economy went way up. This is rated at 36 in the city, 36 highway. Drops to about 35, 36 if you guys go for an all-wheel drive model. So not really a penalty if you guys go for all-wheel drive. Despite the fact that we lost power here, Toyota says that you can get, or you can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which is plenty uh, competitive. It's the same as the V6. And the curb weight of this fan is right at around 4,675 pounds. So it is heavy, but not really that much heavier than most of the competitors. Now let's take a look at the styling of the latest Sienna. Now, of course, you guys know this is the fourth generation model. Toyota introduced it last year, and it was a well overdue redesign. The previous generation went on for like 10 years without a full redesign. And you can see the front fascia of this van definitely has a lot of the corporate Toyota styling elements here, from a massive grille to these full LED headlights. In fact, Toyota says the front fascia was styled after the Japanese bullet train, and you have basically a 0.29 coefficient of drag on some trims. This model here, because it's the X XXC actually has a worse coefficient of drag of like 0.33 because of the bigger grills and whatnot. You can see all Sienna has now come standard with full LED headlights, which include this very small LED daytime running light or LED turn signal. The LED daytime running lights are here. You can see it's a reflector style uh, low and high beam. The platinum models will have a projector beam style. You can see on the XSE, you also get these fog lights. I believe the fog lights come on the XLE and up there, uh, an LED fog light. There is a fake vent over here. And then you can see the grill on the uh, XSE has a more hexagonal shape uh, where it kind of creates a mesh look with the black finish along with the black grill. The Toyota logo here you can see is outlined in blue to let everybody know that you have a hybrid, which is the only way, remember, you can buy a Sienna. And overall, let me know what you think of the styling. Some people think that the van looks like a swagger van. That's what Toyota used to call the previous generation. Um, I actually think it looks best in XSE. There is a new trim level called the Woodland Edition for 2022, which actually gives us more of an outdoorsy, off-roady type image because Toyota actually managed to raise up the ground clearance by a half an inch on that model and give us standard all-wheel drive. Now, looking at the wheels on this XSE, you can see these are 20 20-inch wheel that you get with this trim, which look fantastic. They're, they're wrapped in 235 50 series R20 tires. 
Um, you get around 6.3 inches of ground clearance with this fan here, but the Woodland model will increase that to just under seven inches, which seven inches of ground clearance is actually decent. There are some crossovers that have less ground clearance than the Woodland Edition Sienna, so I'll be looking forward to driving that whenever Toyota has that available. Now, looking at the rest of the profile, this is now built on the TNGA K architecture, which Toyota introduced last year on the Sienna. It shares that platform with the RAV4, with the Camry, with the Highlander. At 204 inches long, this is on the longer end. It's about four inches longer than the previous generation, about the same size as all of its competitors. Its wheelbase is 120 inches long, so again, two inches longer than the previous generation. Uh, and you can see the XSE gives you these black side mirrors. You do have a sunroof, a standard size sunroof here, but you can get a panel roof if you guys go for the higher end trims. And then you can see here, Toyota really sculpted the sides of this fan to give it a more aggressive look, especially from like the bulging fenders, the character lines going across the side, the taillights that kind of have almost like a Supra inspired design to them with their LED combination. You can see the turn signal is incandescent, but you have an LED uh, taillight. You have blacked out Sienna badging here at the back, although the rest of the badging is not blacked out. Uh, like for that XSE hybrid badge. So I kind of wish the Toyota would have just kept it consistent there. Uh, but overall, let me know what you think of the rear end styling. The Sienna definitely has an interesting, more aggressive appeal to it. The rear bumper on the XSE, you can see how it has a more aggressive diffuser style to the lower valence, which tries to give it a little bit of a sportier look. Now opening up the power tailgate, which you get standard on this trim, you can see Minivans have always been very practical at this, and because this is the area where the third row has to fold down into, you get 33 and a half cubic feet of storage space. That's actually the same as what you're gonna get in like a Toyota RAV4 with its second row seats up. So you can comfortably seat seven people in this van and have plenty of room to carry all their luggage and stuff because of that deep floor. There's even a storage compartment over here where Toyota does, they used to offer a vacuum in this van. However, because of COVID, I don't think they can, you can actually spec in the vacuum anymore. But you can see here uh, to actually fold the third row seats down. Toyota doesn't offer a power fold feature like you can get on some competitors, but they have made this easier. You can apparently do this with one hand. So I'm gonna pull that down. And then I believe you just kind of pull this and you can see, oh yeah, that's super, super easy. You can easily do that with one hand. Just pull this right here and you don't even have to pull the other strip. So once you fold that down, you get up to 75 cubic feet of space. And then sadly for this generation, Toyota made it so you can't actually physically remove the second row seats in this van because the side impact airbags are in that seat. Um, that's actually the first minivan to get that. So because of that, you can only just slide and tip the seats forward. And when you do that, Toyota says you get a maximum of 101 cubic feet of space, which is still a lot. However, that is about 40 to 50 cubic feet less than most of the competition, especially if you look at the Chrysler Pacifica which is still the only minivan that has that stow and go seating with the second row seats that fold flat into the floor. So now let's move on to the interior of this 2022 Toyota Sienna. Now, the first thing I wanna show you guys here is the key fob for the vehicle. This is the current Toyota key fob. You can see it has an extra button here for the uh, retractable power sliding doors on both sides, which also have a kick feature. If your hands are, stu are full of stuff, you can basically kick underneath the door uh, and the um, sliding door will open on whichever side. There is no remote start on the fob. I imagine you can access that through the Toyota Entune app or the app through the connected services, but remember that is the older system, not the newer one that we see in the Tundra. Now, as you approach the door handle here, you can see opening the door. My tester with the silver exterior is nicely complemented by this kind of two-tone soft text material on the XSC. You kind of have the red and or, actually it's an orange stitching with this kind of lighter color on the top, darker color on the bottom. It's kind of similar to what I've seen in the Toyota Tundra capstone, which is a good idea because this area here where your jeans are gonna be, it's a darker color, so it doesn't show dirt as much versus this area here, which it shouldn't show as much dirt. It shouldn't be exposed to a lot of dirty, uh, articles of clothing. Now looking at the rest of this cabin, you can see the Sienna with its 6.3 inches of ground clearance gives you a nice easy step in height. The door panel here you can see has a nice light moonstone color. It's a soft touch injection molded plastic, soft touch over here. The window controls also feel nice and high quality. It's one touch for all four. You have a little bit more storage here and cup holders down there on the lower part of the doors. It's all pretty much what you expect uh, when you have a minivan. Now getting inside, you can see very easy step in height. Uh, for somebody my height or, uh, and you can see you have a nice commanding view of the road and when I shut the door the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. It sounds like every other Toyota that's on this same platform. Now, to start the vehicle up, Toyota puts the start stop button over here where you'd expect it to be. It is blocked heavily by the steering wheel so you kind of have to look over if you're not used to that. But 
Once you turn the vehicle on, you can see no engine starter noise, because remember, it's a hybrid. Uh, the gauges do a sweep. There's a very tiny screen there, like a three and a half millimeter or three uh, helper screen, which I know some Toyotas have a larger seven inch screen where there's a lot of unused real estate there. I don't remember if the Sienna has that on the Platinum. I'll have to double check that, but I actually haven't had a chance to uh, drive a Platinum. Toyota's only sent me the XSE trim. So this looks a little bit dated. Uh, thankfully, the nine inch touchscreen is standard on all trims. You can see it's the older Toyota interface. It has Android Auto and CarPlay. However, it is a wired connection. It's not the newest one from Toyota Connected Services. Um, where you have the wireless CarPlay and you have that massive 14 inch display. Toyota really needs to go ahead and add that in the Sienna because this interior is so big, it would really do well if you had like a 12 inch display here. So I questioned Toyota for not putting a larger display in the Sienna when I first saw it last year. I'm still doing that, especially considering the fact that you can get a 12 inch display in things like the Kia Carnival, a 10 inch display in the Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, really the Honda Odyssey is the most dated looking on the interior, but this is not really that much farther ahead of the Honda. The dashboard you can see is a hard touch plastic over the instrument panel hood. Soft touch over here uh, with some genuine stitching right here on this portion. There's a little bit of an interesting gap here, which I don't like. It looks a little inconsistent. Um, soft touch over here, hard touch over the upper end, and you can see more of that soft text with this genuine stitching along the center console. A nice usable storage shelf here, a nice area here where you could put your phone. There's also a wireless phone charging pad. The USB connection is right here along with these cup holders. There's another cup holder here. There's a total of 18 cup holders in this van. So again, nobody's gonna go thirsty here with all the available drink storage. Underneath here, this floating center console, you can see there's a massive storage area here where this is all rubberized, so it helps to keep stuff from sliding around, which is nice. The steering wheel, you can see is a tilt telescoping design. Um, I don't think Toyota offers a power tilt telescoping wheel, even on the Platinum trim, but you can see the XSE gets this perforated leather with the orange stitching. No flat bottom design on the wheel, the horn. Sounds pretty typical. It sounds like the last, you know, Toyota Camry that I drove. Um, more buttons over here for the 120 power outlet, your automatic high beam control, traction control, um, your power door on off switch over here. There's some faux metallic looking aluminum trim here on the XSE. You might get some faux wood on other trims like the Limited or the Platinum. This controls the CVT, CVT transmission. I'm surprised Toyota uses a very traditional gear lever here. Um, put the vehicle in reverse. You can see just a backup camera uh, with trajectory. Uh, I'm sorry, no trajectory, but it does have have uh, distance markers um, and reverse parking sensors, I believe. Again, you have to go to the highest trim to get the full 360 camera, but that resolution is just garbage. It looks like it's from 10 years ago. So Toyota really needs to fix that, especially on such a, a big vehicle. But you can see there's the Apple CarPlay, which at least is very quick and snappy, but the graphics and resolution isn't wonderful. Going back to the home display here, you can see this is the Toyota infotainment system, the older one. You can see there's the GPS display, which it's perfectly fine. It's not, you know, it's definitely better in the newer system, uh, but this is going to be a little bit more at home for those of you who prefer the older system. The climate control, you can see there's a dual zone climate control, um, or I, I'm sorry, it's three up to three zone. If you go for the higher trims, there's three level heated seats. But if you want cooled seats, you're going to have to go for the highest trim. Uh, this um, XSE model also has an eight way power driver seat with a two way lumbar support. No uh, memory seats. You have to again go for the higher trim. The passenger seat is just a four way power adjustable on this trim. And I really think Toyota should consider offering an eight way in case somebody wants to raise and lower the seat. I know a lot of minivan owners prefer that, especially if you, you know, are riding shotgun and you're on this uh, a very long trip. The 12 speaker JBL sound system that my tester has with the plus package also sounds decent, not quite as good as the Harman Kardon in the Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, there's a nice padded armrest over here, uh, a nice big center console storage here with more USB ports, more USB ports over here. Uh, which is nice. You can get this van, I believe, with a refrigerator on the very highest trims, which this one, again, does not have that. There is some incandescent lighting in this trim, which is kind of disappointing. Just a standard sunroof here. Um, I believe the high trims do offer a panel roof. And then over here on the glove box, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped. Um, I'm sorry, it is damped, but not lined with felt. Pretty good size. So overall, the interior of the Sienna is certainly a nice place to spend time. My tester is also missing that uh, rear view camera mirror, which is definitely a necessity if you have the rear seat entertainment package. But overall, you got plenty of space, plenty of technology. You just have to be okay with the fact that the screens are a little bit on the smaller side, and it's not really the most luxurious feeling cabin. So this is a minivan. Let's take a look at the second and the third row seating of the new Sienna. You can see my tester comes standard with the captain's chairs, which means we have seating capacity of up to seven. You can also get up to eight passenger seating if you delete this and get kind of like the bench seat, which has the ability to, I believe, remove the middle seat. You can store it in the back. 
there's a ton of leg room back here. In fact, Toyota says, when this is kind of like in the mid position, I have it slid all the way back right now, uh, you get just under 40 inches of leg room, which is pretty much the same as the front seats. To get back into the third row, I'll show you that in a moment, but you can see, I do like how these seats have that same two-tone look with the orange stitching, with the soft text. Getting back here, there's just a ton of space back here, which I like. And then once you get back here, you can close the power sliding door by pushing that button or just kind of flipping that. You can see in terms of the materials, it's all hard touch plastic on this door panel, which is kind of what I expect. There is a unexpected retractable sunshade here, which is nice. Um, some grab handles here. Uh, there's a standard 120 uh, power outlet over here, along with those USB ports, um, cup holders over here. And then you can see there's an armrest here that folds down. Uh, and then there's more door pockets on that side or cup holders. And then there's another armrest here. So again, this is very comfortable. And Toyota even gives you the option to kind of lean this seat back if you want to get comfortable. But again, that's going to eat into your third row seat space. There's no um, lev latch here to move the seat forward. Instead, it's over here on the side where I can slide the seat forward and back. You can see once I slide it all the way forward, that definitely eats into my space. But it gives you a ton of room in the third row of this vehicle, which by the way, the third row offers a ton of space as well. I'm actually gonna get out and show you guys. Obviously to get back here, you can cut through the middle here if you have the captain's chairs. However, Toyota also gives you the option where I can pull this. You can see that kind of slides the seat up and you can slide that out of the way. Now, this is actually what you have to do if you want to get the maximum cargo in this van, because remember, these seats don't come out because there are side airbags built into the seat. It's the only van in the market that doesn't give you that ability. Now, getting back here into the third row, you can see it has the same kind of two-tone look, although the seats themselves don't look all that plush. Now, this is what the second row all the way back, you can see Toyota says there's about 38.7 inches of legroom back here, but you do have to move the seat up here into its second middle position, which in this mode, it's definitely eating up into the space a, a little bit. But once you're back here, you can see there's no third row sunshades, just second row on the XSE trims. You have cup holders here, uh, cup holders here. It's all hard touch plastic. There's two USB charging ports over here. So this one's a little bit basic in terms of features. You do have rear seat air vents. Uh, you have uh, climate control zones back here. So actually it's technically four zones, even on the XSE trim. Sad to see that there's incandescent lighting back here. But again, if you want to carry three people or seven people back here, and you can even fit three across, although this is a little bit narrow feeling, especially if you're a wider frame, a minivan is seriously the way to go. And the Sienna's um, interior in the second and the third row is among the most spacious. This has about an inch or two more legroom versus most of its main rivals. Now, last year, when I first had a chance to drive the new, completely redesigned Sienna, I was very shocked that Toyota only offers this as a hybrid. However, with fuel economy of 36 MPG combined for this front drive model, it is a whopping 65% better versus what you're going to get in a Honda Odyssey, a Kia Carnival, a Chrysler Pacifica. All of them have V6 naturally aspirated engines. Now, in my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging about 32 MPG, which is really damn good considering this is a seven-seater or eight-seater minivan. You can also get it with all-wheel drive, which it'll drop it by like one or two MPG. It's really not that much. So you have to admire Toyota for really giving us you know, a hybrid powertrain. I think that was a great decision on their part. Now, I, I do want to test out what the zero to 60 performance is like for this van. I've got the front wheel drive model. We're just going to floor it from a stop here and see what we can do. A lot of noise. But I got zero to 60 in 8.2 seconds. 8.2 is right around where I expected it to be. I believe some of the uh, other publications have been getting slightly under eight seconds. Um, keep in mind that was, this is for a front wheel drive model. The all wheel drive model could be a little bit faster because you add that second uh, or that third electric motor at the back axle giving you an extra 53 horsepower. You still have 245 combined total horsepower. But again, you don't buy minivans to go drag racing, obviously. So the old V6 Sienna was faster. The V6 powered competition is obviously faster. However, this is gonna get so much better gas mods. And also because it's a, it's a hybrid vehicle, it doesn't feel all that sluggish. And that's kind of the whole point when you buy um, you know, electrified powertrain is you, you do get a sense that the vehicle feels quicker uh, because of that low end torque. I tried brake torquing it there this time. Come on, 8.4 seconds. So 8.2 is the fastest I'm gonna get in this van, which is perfectly respectable. However, I do worry that with, when you start loading this up with six or seven people, all their stuff, if you're towing 3,500 pounds, this is gonna feel a lot more sluggish. Now, 
because it's a hybrid vehicle, every time my foot goes down uh, and I'm demanding more acceleration, this is where you know you feel that electric motor torque. Uh, the CVT also is very quick to adjust the ratios. Uh, and put the engine in the meat of its power band. The engine on its own makes like 190 horsepower, so uh, you have to add in the extra 180 that you get from the electric motor. But when you do that, I mean, this has enough power. Um, maybe it's just the fact that I'm getting older, but you know, you don't, I don't expect minivan drivers to be driving the way I'm driving. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes to show you the responsiveness. But yes, that is a very unpleasant sound, but most of you aren't gonna be driving like that. So I'll take it out of sport mode here, which by the way, in sport mode, this vehicle doesn't really feel all that sporty. What I only notice is the steering gets slightly heavier in sport mode and the, um, throttle response gets a little bit more sensitive. The transmission tries to get it into its lower ratios a little bit sooner. Um, that's essentially the whole point of sport mode. Most of you are gonna drive the vehicle in just normal mode or eco mode. Uh, and this is where I primarily spent my time driving the Sienna. And this is where, you know, the Sienna is not the sportiest driving van, but that's not the purpose. However, I do like how when they redesigned this van last year, they switched it to an all independent suspension, got rid of that semi-independent twist beam because now we're riding on that TNGA-K platform. Uh, which is the same platform that also underpins like a Highlander, a uh, RAV4, a Camry. And this is with the vehicle in normal mode. You can see I've got my foot down, maybe partial throttle, like a quarter throttle, and it gets up to speed just fine. You do have to hear the groan of the four cylinder, which is not pleasant. The V6 sounding competition is better, uh, but really how awesome would it be if Toyota offered this vehicle as a prime? If they put the RAV4 Prime's powertrain in this van and we had 302 horsepower and we had like, you know, 35, 40 miles of electric range, that would be awesome. So Toyota, if you're watching this, please, please consider doing a Sienna Prime. I think it would do fantastic. Now, um, the rest of the driving experience with the Sienna is actually really easy. I mean, this vehicle weighs um, around 4,600 pounds. You feel the weight, you feel the width and the size. This is certainly, there's nothing really any anything mini about this minivan. It certainly feels like a big vehicle. But the cool thing is, is when you're light on the throttle, you can coast around this vehicle at golf cart speeds in electric only mode. Now it's obviously not gonna do that if I try to push EV mode here. The very, very small 1.9 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride battery struggles to actually move this vehicle and provide enough power uh, on electric power alone. Only at parking lot speeds, you're gonna notice that you can coast around with the engine off. If I lift off the throttle here, you can see the engine did shut off and I'm just coasting along. Uh, and this is where you're gonna save the most gas. This is why this vehicle will do you know, 36 MPG in the city, because in the city, you're gonna primarily be using the electric powertrain. And I actually did was able to get around 35 uh, in like some purely city driving. On the highway, it was around 32. So better MPG in the city is pretty much what I expected. Um, and it's you know where a lot of people are gonna be shocked because when you combine that with the 18 gallon gas tank that this van has, you get a 648 mile cruising range, nearly 650 miles of range. Now, when I started this vehicle with a full tank, it was showing up just under 500 miles. That's of course with most of my spirited driving, spirited driving from other media who had this van before me. So I imagine uh, owners are gonna be able to do better versus what I'm doing with the MPG. Uh, which is just phenomenal. The seats also in this XSE version, they're the soft text with the two-tone. I like the way they look and they're pretty comfortable and supportive. They're only heated. If you want the ventilated seats and the heated steering wheel, you have to go for the full-on platinum model. Uh, my tester has Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, uh, which includes lane trace assist. It works just fine. It's not quite as good as the 2.5 that I've tested on all of the newest, newest models, even though this was just redesigned. The Sienna is already starting to feel dated from the gauge cluster, which is not fully digital, the nine inch display here, which has the older system. Toyota Toyota should have launched this car with the new uh, Toyota Connect system from Connected Services. This is just gonna date the van completely. However, at least it's nice that the nine inch screen is gonna be standard. The 12 speaker JBL sound system in this van also sounds decent. Although I believe the, the system you get in the Pacifica, which just feels a little bit more luxurious than the Sienna is a little bit more high end, but you're gonna again pay for that. But really what I like about the Sienna is the fact that you can haul, you know, seven, eight people. You can tow, you can tow up to 3,500 pounds. You can carry a bunch of crap in this van and you can get well over 30 MPG without even trying. I mean, that is the best MPG in the segment and it still remains the only electrified option out there if you guys want all wheel drive and a hybrid. So the Pacifica still does not offer that. Honda doesn't offer that. Uh, Kia doesn't offer that. And that's a very much a missed opportunity. So in terms of just living with a vehicle like this day to day, yes, the Sienna has its flaws it's not the sportiest, it's not the fastest, but it's still damn practical. It still has a good amount of tech and the excellent gas mileage. Well, that's gonna be a game changer for a lot of, uh, a lot of people. And I imagine a lot of owners are gonna pick this van over a lot of its competition just because of that. 
So after spending a full week with the 2022 Toyota Sienna after driving a lot of its competitors last year for that same time period, I'm pretty confident in saying that the Sienna still remains one of my favorite minivan options, specifically, of course, for that standard hybrid powertrain. I mean, just averaging over 30 MPG in around town driving and around 36 when I really was trying to get better gas mileage in this thing is very impressive. And yes, the Sienna is not the quickest and not the sportiest driving van in the segment. That's really not the point of a minivan. I mean, zero to 60 in just over eight seconds is very respectable. You're only going to notice it's underpowered if you constantly tow and carry a lot of people and stuff. And that's where you might want to consider going for its V6 powered competition. But again, you're going to be sacrificing a lot in terms of MPG. The interior of the Sienna also is fairly nice. It's not the most luxurious again, but it has plenty of room. The seats are comfortable, although I do wish the Toyota would add a eight-way power passenger seat so you could actually adjust the passenger side up and down. The infotainment system here, the standard nine-inch display is a good size, but it's going to quickly look dated, especially now that I've seen Toyota's latest interface in the new Tundra and of course the Lexus products. Toyota really needs to add that new interface with a larger screen, especially in a van that has this massive interior. I love the second row seats that offer plenty of space. I still wish that they were able to be removed or at least fold flat because you are going to lose out in some cargo space. So be sure you're OK with that before you actually choose the Sienna. And of course, the fact that you can get this van with all wheel drive. It's the only hybridized minivan that you can get with all wheel drive because the Pacifica plug in is a plug in, but it only comes with front wheel drive. That's a huge selling factor for the Sienna. And for that reason alone, I imagine a lot of you are probably going to pick that, especially if you are looking for better gas mileage and you live in one of those snow belt states. Of course, the Sienna is really nice, but it's also going to cost you a pretty penny. This is about a thousand to two thousand dollars more expensive versus its versus its main rivals. Uh, competition like the Kia Carnival, the Chrysler Pacifica, and the Honda Odyssey, of course, are all strong competitors. The van segment has shrunk, but there's really no bad options here. They're all pretty strong. This van starts at just under $35,000 for the base LE Again, with front wheel drive at about 900 bucks if you guys want all wheel drive. Now the XSE version is kind of in the middle of the trim hierarchy. This starts at around $42,000. Mine's a front drive model um, at again about 900 bucks if you guys want all wheel drive. At the very top end, you're gonna spend just over 50 grand for the platinum version with all wheel drive, which again, a lot of money for a minivan, especially if you, want, if you guys want the heated and ventilated seats, the heated steering wheel, the full 360 camera, you're gonna have to spend that 50 grand for the platinum. This model here basically with options, stickers for around 45, thousand dollars including the destination charge now 45 grand again a lot of money but that's kind of just where minivan prices have gone because of all the technology all the space and now with this one you're going to be saving a ton of money at the pump and you're going to be enjoying a cruising range of well over 500 to maybe even 600 miles so again if you plan on doing a lot of long road trips you need the best gas mileage you need space for your family this is the one that you're going to want to pick it's the only option out there if you want that along with all-wheel drive but with all that said I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 toyota sienna if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.